If you had invested in JP Morgan Chase a year ago, you would have had an 80% return on your investment. In this video, I will do a stock analysis on JP Morgan to help you determine if you should be buying or selling the stock. Now before we go into the actual analysis of this stock, let's first head over to my spreadsheet and look at the basics first. And by the way, if you want access to this sheet, along with all the other stock analysis we have covered up to now, simply click on the link in the description below. Now looking at JP Morgan, we will see that they are trading at $157.45 with a market cap of $476 billion. And the industry PE ratio is 11.9, which means that there is a bit of sentiment driving the stock price at the moment. And that is a bit more expensive than the industry. The dividend yield is 2.29%. Now next we are heading over to the fundamentals or the financial health and see how they have been performing in the past. The first thing we are looking at is the revenues. We will see that the revenues have been pretty much flat and then dipping slightly, but then it has been going in an uptrend. With the earnings per share, we see exactly the same thing. It has been going in an uptrend. It started in 2011 with 4.5 and then currently sitting at 12.6. So that is really good. Next up, we are looking at the return on equity and the return on invested capital. However, in this case, we will not be looking at the return on invested capital since it doesn't really apply to banks or insurance companies. Banks don't typically invest the capital for gain as normal businesses would. Now with the return on equity, we are generally looking at a benchmark of 10%. In their case, you will see that they have been doing 10% consistently, except for one year in 2013, but currently sitting at around 16%, which looks really good. Next up, we are looking at the free cash flows and the operating cash flows. Now the operating cash flows is the money that they make from the day to day operations. Now in both the operating cash flows and the free cash flows, it looks very, very inconsistent. So not exactly what you want to see in a stock. You want to see consistency, but in their case, they don't meet this. Looking at the gross margins though, we will see that it looks very healthy. The gross margins has been consistently sitting between 75 and around 90%. So really healthy, good gross margins. The net margins, we will see the same thing. Also very healthy and it has been growing over the last few years. So exactly what you want to see. You want to see net margins growing as well. Now we are looking at the current ratio and the debt to equity ratio. In this case, we will not look at the current ratio because it's very difficult to do a current ratio for banks. When it comes to current liabilities, you don't really know when people will be withdrawing their deposits. Now with a debt to equity, we are looking at a debt to equity of 40% or less. In their case, it is a little bit high, sitting at around 170%. Next up, we are looking at the shares outstanding. We will see that there has been some buybacks going on. So at least that's a good thing. It shows that they are positive about the stock. Now we are going to score them down in our checklist and see how they have been performing in terms of the fundamentals. The debt to equity we can see is sitting at 165%, so a lot more than the 40% or less that we require. The revenues have been growing by around 2.4%, and not 5% that we require. The return on equity has been sitting at around 11.3%. The free cash flows and operating cash flows, as we saw, very inconsistent, so it has not been growing. The gross margins have been very healthy, so it is more than 10%. The net margins, 25% on average, so definitely more than 10% we require. The earnings per share sitting at 11%, which brings them in at a total of four out of eight for the fundamentals. Now we are going to look at the management and see how experienced the management is. Now in the management's case, we will not be looking at the return on invested capital as we generally will, because this generally tells us how the management is investing the capital for the shareholders. But like I mentioned earlier in this video, we will not be bringing this in to, uh, with the management. So now when we look at the management, we will see that the leadership team have been around for more than two years. The board members have been around for more than three years. Generally, we are also looking at the return on invested capital, but like I said earlier in this video, we will not be looking at the return on invested capital for JP Morgan since it doesn't really apply to banks. So this brings them in at a total of two out of two for the management. Now we are going to look at the insider trading and see what the insiders think about the stock. If they are buying the stock, it means that they are positive about the stock price going up. 
And if they are not, then it, it's probably a red flag to us. Looking at the insider trading, we see something a bit alarming. We will see that there has been a lot of selling going on at JP Morgan. In the last three months, we will see that 569,000 shares got sold. And in the last 12 months, more than a million shares were sold by insiders. So that is a bit of a red flag to me. Now we are going to look at the analyst ratings and see what the analysts think about this stock. As you can see, the analysts are rating it a four out of five and 11 giving it a buy, six a strong buy, six a hold, two a sell and one a strong sell. They are predicting a 12 month target of $163 with a potential return of 3.7%. So not great. And if you invested in JP Morgan a year ago, you would have had an 80.9% return on your investment. Now we are heading into the verdict and my final views around this stock. If you like this analysis, please click the like button. Also click the red subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified whenever we do more videos like this. So heading into the verdict, we will see that the fundamentals is four out of eight management, two out of two. The insiders are selling shares. So that is a bit of a red flag to me. The current price is $157 and the fair price according to a DCF model is $180. This means that they are a bit undervalued and you will probably be seeing a margin of safety of about 12% if you buy JP Morgan stock. But keep in mind, there is a bit of selling going on. So that is a bit of a red flag to me. But overall, it looks like the stock is a bit undervalued at the moment. Just once again, keep in mind that there is insider selling going on. So to me personally, that is a bit of a red flag. If you like money, creating wealth and want financial freedom, please join our money tribe by clicking the subscribe button below this video now. And because I know you need a little extra motivation, every month we will give away a copy of our book, The Money Secret, along with some really cool channel merchandise. And we will give it to active subscribers on this channel. So make sure to click the subscribe button below this video now and click the bell icon to be notified whenever we do more videos like this.